All right. Oh my gosh, look at Miss Murphy's second grade class. Look at all those kids out there. All right. Hey, uh, it's the Big Dave Show virtual field trip number eight. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Hey, there's Miss Murphy's class there. Hi, I can see you guys up there waving. Oh my gosh, you guys look fantastic. Congrats on uh, joining us here today. Let me poke around in here for a second and see who else. So you got other classes there. I see uh, lots of folks just wave as I'm going by. Hi. I see so many people and uh, this is a, I tell you what, this might be one of our most crowded ones yet. So uh, that's amazing. And uh, well, today we're gonna be going on a trip uh, to the Great American Ballpark in the Cincinnati Reds Museum, a uh, Hall of Fame and Museum there, I should say. And uh, oh, we got people coming in still. So this is a lot of fun and uh, we're so glad that you guys can join us. I've got my Mr. Red Legs here and I've got him right here. One of my favorite bobbleheads right there, Mr. Redlegs. This is, a, I believe this was the uh, eight, first team, the Red Stockings, 1869, 150 years from a uh, couple from last year. A little Skyline Chili there. I have quite a few bobbleheads. I'm a big baseball fan. I'm gonna turn my computer a little bit there. You see them over there in the corner. Ah, oh, that shelf there. Oh, they go way up. So I've got all the, Michael likes that. See, he knows I'm a Reds fan. So yeah, so we're gonna take a tour here to Great America Ballpark. Sadly, uh, the lady that's gonna be here with us, uh, she didn't get to, Chelsea, you didn't get to go on this trip with us. So you're excited to see it as well, I imagine. I'm very excited. I was disappointed I didn't get to go, but I'm really looking forward to this because it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, and there's a huge surprise at the end. Ashley, oh. I got to say, Ashley, I was very impressed with some of the skills you showed on the baseball diamond. Oh, thank you. And I had never been through the Reds Hall of Fame, and I'm not huge on baseball, but this has changed my mind a bit. Uh, gives you a, a new appreciation for the game. Absolutely. And uh, I, I'm not going to say it, and he, hopefully he doesn't spoil it, but Statman, you got to live the dream, a childhood dream of yours on this field trip. Oh my gosh, yeah, you have no idea. Uh, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so let's just jump right into the field trip because this is so cool. I can't wait to relive it. Absolutely. So, uh, guys, as always, I'm going to ask you real quick to, uh, to mute your microphones uh, so everybody can hear the audio really well. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, play you the field trip and then We've got Mike and uh, we've got Ken from the uh, Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and Museum to answer any questions. If you have some questions, go ahead and use the chat feature there. Please only use the chat feature for questions, so because it's hard to keep find them if uh, you guys are chatting back and forth in there. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and go on our field trip to the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and Museum in Great American Ballpark. Here we go. Hey, it's the Big Dave Show, and welcome to virtual field trip number eight, and I'll give you a guess as to where we are today. Huh. We're at Great American Ballpark, yeah! We're going to get a little behind-the-scenes tour, check out some new stuff that they had ready for this year but couldn't show off, and check out the Hall of Fame, maybe play a little wiffle ball with Mr. Redlegs. What do you say? And let's take our first stop here inside the beautiful Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. Ken, you're going to give us a tour. Absolutely. Here at the Reds Hall of Fame Museum presented by Dinsmore, we have 15,000 square feet of exhibit space. So let's pop in into the main exhibit gallery and take a look and see what we can find. All right. Yeah, so we have over 200 pennants on display. The idea of the pennant race, if you win the league, you get to go to the World Series. This was back before there were playoffs and divisions and everything. The National League winner won the National League pennant during the regular season, went straight to the World Series. Same thing for the American League winner. This is, again, before 1969, before the playoffs. So you won the pennant, and you went straight to the World Series. So over 200 pennants on display throughout Reds history. and. Some of these you might have hanging on your walls in the room. Mom or dad might have them, grandma and grandpa might have them. I think Big Dave, you found a pennant that you have. Look, there's my pennant above my desk at home and there it is in the Hall of Fame. 
This is the 1919 World Series. So the first World Series that the Reds won in 1919, this was their National League Champions pennant. Oh my gosh, From look at that. 101 years ago. And it was red. This was, this was a cool team. This was a Negro League team in Cincinnati. They were called the Cincinnati Tigers. And they actually wore old Reds jerseys from previous years as their official uniforms. And there's a great photo. You probably can't get a good picture of it, but this is the team waiting to get on the bus uh, to travel to one of their games. There was a time in baseball history where if you were a black player, you weren't allowed to play on a major league team. So African Americans were not permitted to play major league baseball. So they had a separate league. It was called the Negro Leagues. And these jerseys are replica jerseys that represent many of the Negro League teams at the time. So this is before the days of Jackie Robinson. So there's Sparky Anderson, the manager, and then this we call the Great Eight. So this was the starting lineup of the Big Red Machine. So who was your favorite Big Red Machine guy? Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. And the Johnny Bench. Well, we called it a pitch back. It was a big thing you put in the backyard. I got it for my birthday one year. You could throw the ball and it would bounce off the net and come back to you and you'd field it. Concepcion, mm -hmm. Joe, Joe, rest in peace. Tony, big dog. And you got the, and then the outfielders. Griffey, yep. Cesar Geronimo, bingo. George Foster, oh, oh, wow. you got it. You got it. Good job. So Pete Rose has the most hits of any player in Major League Baseball history. So we have every hit that he collected in his career represented by a baseball on the wall. So there's 4,256 baseballs on this wall. interactive kiosk and Big Dave you gotta check this out because if you ever want tips on fielding, tips on pitching, tips on hitting, you can pull up a video of Eric Davis, your boy, you mentioned Eric Davis, oh, he'll yeah. give you some tips on hitting. I wanna know why this guy's sleeves are off, he's super swollen. It's great, I know right, so this is a guy, his name was Ted Kluzewski, they called him Big Clue, and the story goes when he came to the Reds, they gave him the biggest jersey they could find in the clubhouse and the jersey didn't fit. He said, my arms, I, I can't fit my arms in here. So he cut the sleeves off his jersey, and then eventually the Reds adopted the best style uniform. But that was because, his, he said his arms were so big, the jersey didn't feel comfortable, so he cut the sleeves off. So this is a chance for you to come into the museum sit on a TV set and record a post game. First of all, I gotta tell you, the Phillips is my favorite tool in my toolbox. I usually use a flathead for most screws, but the Phillips is the best. And here's the exact reason why I love the Phillips. Look at him. He can throw, he can run, he can slide. That's why he's the pride of the team. And if you're a best pitcher, Brandon Phillips is your best friend. Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan was his favorite. So this is a cool part. You can come into the plaque room. So all the Reds Hall of Famers have a plaque. And we also have it tied to a video about their career. So you can select a player and in the plaque room, which is the, the Hall of the Champions Gallery, um, or the Hall of Fame, sorry, the Hall of Fame Gallery here at the museum. Go ahead, Mr. Red Legs, hit that arrow. And we'll get a little bit about Joe Morgan. Oh, something. Joe Morgan is considered one of the greatest second basemen in baseball history. His arrival ushered in the apex of the Big Red Machine era. Riding an elevator with Mr. Redlegs. What about it? You all right? He's scared. We got him trapped. <laughs> Hey, this is indeed a treat. We've got Red COO and President Phil Casolini here. Good morning. Dave, how are we doing? We're doing great. So this is what we're about to check out here. Okay, so this is a, a long time coming, but we are up on the view level at the southwest corner of the building. It is the Tri-Health Family Zone. 
and it was supposed to be op open to uh, all families this year. It was really a way to kind of double our fan zone, but up here on the view level. Thank you for doing it. I mean, just continuous. I'll show you what I was showing them. <laughs> so again, we've introduced this for a little bit more of the families with the younger kids. And so you can see that play area. Uh, we've got a reading and activity room. Nursing moms with infants can come in here. Get out of the hustle and bustle and of course follow the game. And uh, you can go in there and see we've got a nice comfortable area for them to sit. And for all the mamas. For all the mamas. Oh, this is nice. And if you go around the bend, you can see where the actual oh, yeah. nursing stations are. And you can hear the game in here. Well, the TVs, the we got the TVs going. Yeah. Very nice. Relaxing. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful place to, yeah. So there's one on the second floor on the suite level, and then we added this one as part of this project. So as we work our way down, you can see we're starting to step up the age of the activities a little bit. The inspiration for this, batting cages that feel like you're hitting them into the river. You know the old cruise ships when you could hit golf balls into the ocean when that wasn't as politically incorrect as it would be today. <laughs> but same thing was the idea. So this is a little batting cage up top. Again, we have them at the Hall of Fame and you can play on the wiffle ball field, but this is for that age group that is, you know, not maybe getting a chance uh, down below. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You can't beat this. I love this. Yeah. Calm and relaxing. Wow. So again, by design, this is meant to be a calming experience on the families. And, and so this was a natural we had been asked about. And like I said, we would try health, help. We, we figured out kind of how to build it out and what to have it. Okay, so we've been upstairs in the ballpark and there was the kids zone that was upstairs. It's all in the museum yeah. and lots of cool stuff that kids and adults can do. We thought we'd finish the day with a little batting practice. You up for some batting practice? Again. Always up for some BP. Let's do it. Let's do some BP. All right, now this is a, wait a minute. <laughs> this is perfect. Tom Browning is going to throw us wiffle ball batting practice? Correct. <laughs> I'm putting my jacket back on. This yeah. ain't happening. I thought Mr. Redlegs was pitching. Tom Browning, this is perfect. Perfect game. Okay. Let's go all of them. <laughs> all right. Well, let's. I guess hey, we gotta yeah, do I'm this. I'm gonna lay it in there. Just see how far you can hit it. Oh. 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 I'm trying to make it. I'll try to throw it straight. Woo! Stop that. Oh, a little foul tip. Oh! There you go. That's a point out of truck right there. Woo! Give me my truck. Woo! <laughs> See, I got tips from Eric Davis in the museum. He did. Yeah, you just got those. That was so good. Big shot. All right, one more good one. Underneath it. This is a dream come true. I'm right. batting against Tom Browning. Oh! oh. Make it easy out, easy out. Oh, I oh. whiffed! Make it. Damn. Oh, don't make that. That's all right. That was oh. foul. Sounds like the one that was thank our friends at the Cincinnati Reds here for taking us around today. This has been really cool. It's been so neat. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe I whiffed on some pitches from a guy that threw a perfect game in baseball. I'm honored to have missed those pitches, but hey, so much fun. And tell you what, we're going to jump back on here now and answer any questions you might have. And teachers, uh, we got some great tools for you guys to go on more virtual field trips that break down into individual categories here with the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. So hang on, thank you to the Reds. How did everybody like our trip to the Great American Ballpark? How about that? 
Mr. Red. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. And I tell you what, we want to bring in right now. Let me find him. Uh, I'm going to find Ken real fast if I can find Ken from the Hall of Fame. And, yeah, Big Dave, I'm here. Yeah, I just got to find you up there. <laughs> I don't know where he is. We have so many people. I see Michael there. And I think Ken. Well, if, if, if history is any indication, they usually put me on the back page. So <laughs> look back there. Well, we'll find you. I tell you what, uh, we want to get to some questions here in just a second. Ken and uh, Ken Freeman with the uh, Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame and Museum Center. Thank you for that fun uh, field trip today. And I want to see if we've got some questions here. All right, let's see. Oh, I think I started over, so I might have lost some of the questions there this morning. So if you've got them, go ahead and, and type them in. But uh, I was, I'll was i start real quick, Ken. How many visitors a year do you guys get this year excluded, obviously? Right, uh, right. Since 2020 was not necessarily the normal year that we're yeah. used to. But we um, in a typical year, we would have 15,000 uh, students from school groups that would visit with us in addition then to general public. So the cool thing about what we have for school groups is, again, this is a normal year, but we have tours of the ballpark, tours of the museum that we can do for schools. And we have six different education programs that we offer. There's a science program, there's a math program, there's a social studies program. So you can come to the museum, do an education program, bring your lunch and we can make a day of it. So uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool uh, field trip. Again, in a normal year, since it's not normal, what we're doing this year is something a little new, is we have live video conferencing from the museum. So your school can connect to us and do one of those programs virtually instead of coming on site. And then we can also do a virtual tour and a vir virtual tour of the museum and a virtual tour of the ballpark. And you can be stay inside your school and still get that experience. So that information, if, for the teachers that are out there that are interested, if you go to redsmuseum.org, redsmuseum.org and you can go to our school groups page and find more information about that that's a great tool to have there uh ken and i tell you what i'm, I'm seeing a lot of great questions i'm going to answer this first one somebody uh miss mangers uh third grade class wanted to know what position brandon phillips played he played second base so uh actually brandon's still playing baseball and uh miss finwich class from Montfort, Montfort heights elementary would like to know do you make baseballs there? That's a good question. That's a good question. Baseballs are manufactured in a lot of different places, but the official baseballs that are used in major league games are actually manufactured in Costa Rica, which is uh, a Central American country. So if you look on the map in Central America, kind of in between Mexico and South America, that region of North America is called Central America. And every major league baseball is made in Costa Rica. And what are they made out of mainly? Oh, that's that's a that's a complicated question. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, that was a me question. I shouldn't have asked that. I know, but what's inside them? We well, know. there's there's a there's a cork center, uh -huh. right? And then there's rubber, then the cork, and then there's yarn, different layers of wool yarn that are wound around, and then on the outside you have a cowhide um, cover and then you have some synthetic stitching that makes up the 108 stitches or 216, 216 stitches, 108 double stitches, that right. every baseball is sewn by hand. Oh my goodness. Imagine that, every Major League Baseball has to be sewn by hand. So when they throw one callously into the stands after it's a foul ball or something, somebody in Costa Rica is going, I spent an hour making that ball. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We've got a lot of questions coming in, Ken. Uh, let me get to the next one here. Uh, Miss Murphy's class, and this is going to put your your uh, title there of the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum to the test. How many times have the Reds made the playoffs? That's a tough question to answer. We know how many question. times. Now sure I can, can tell you the they've, World Series easily. They've made the World Series nine times. They've won the World Series five times. They made the World Series nine times. Um, and then beyond that, they made the playoffs in, when they didn't make it to the World Series, they made the playoffs in 73, 79, uh, 95, oh, you don't 10, have 12, 13. <laughs> and then, then the last year. And then so, the last year, there you go. Um, 
Oh, yeah, here's a fun question. And this is a very subjective question from Katie Bailey. She'd like to know who is the best batter in Reds history? Wow. I think it's subjective. Depends on, yeah, it depends you on your it. definition of who's the greatest batter, right? So the greatest single season in Reds history for a batting average in the modern era was a guy named Cy Seymour way back in the early 1900s. But the Reds had a player in 1919 named Ed Roush, and he won the batting title twice. But the player with the most hits ever in Reds history and then in all of baseball history is Pete Rose. Yeah. So those would be the on the short list. And Joey Votto is no slouch himself. So yeah. those would be on the short list of great hitters in Reds history. And I think you could put Sean Casey on that list. He was quite the hitter, too. You sure could with over right. a 300 career average. Miss uh, Teresa wants to know how many players are on the team. Uh, it, it depends, you know, again, are we in a normal year? Uh, so this year was a little bit different, but normally before COVID, it was 25 players were allowed to be on a major league roster. I think they expanded it to one to make it 26. And then in a normal year after September 1st, you're allowed 40 players to be in the major league clubhouse. So there's a 40 man roster on the team. Throughout most of the year, it would be 25 or 26 players that would be allowed to be in the dugout. Great. With um, nine players at once on the field. So you'd have nine starters and then reserve players, pitchers and, and extra players. Great question right here coming. Um, oh, boy, this is going to be tough. Miss Manger, she's given us some tough questions. How many games have the Reds won since they became a team? I'm sure that answer is there somewhere, but it'd be hard. The, the answer is there on baseballreference.com. The, the short answer is a little over 10,000 total wins in franchise history. And uh, Heather Harden would like to know, when did the Reds become a team? It's a great question. Uh, the first all-professional team was the Red Stockings in 1869. So that's 151 years ago. The current Reds date to 1882. So, and then I'll leave out all of the, uh, the details of, of the differences between those two. But the first all-professional team, the Red Stockings of 1869. Oh, wait, uh, let's see. Uh, there's Joey Votto's my favorite player. Who's the hardest team they have ever played? They've played some tough teams. That's right. I, I think, you know, in recent history, they might say the Atlanta Braves, right? Well, that because, was a tough one, especially uh, for our batters. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so. That's, well, that's, a, that's a really tough one. But they, they've played, you know, in postseason, they've played the Yankees in the World Series. They've, they've beat them once. They've lost to them twice. So, you know, Big Dave, your Baltimore Orioles, the Reds played in the World Series in 1970, and the Orioles won four games to one. So I bet the players in the 1970 Reds would say the Orioles were a really tough team that year, too. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Miss Murphy's class wants to know how many – bobbleheads do I actually have and uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably I ran out of space on my shelf over there but uh, probably around uh, uh, I'd say 60 or 70 is what I have and um, how did baseball actually get started Miss Murphy's class would like to know that's a that, that's a great question Miss Murphy so it, it kind of the short answer is it was a modified version of something called town ball, and it has its origins in the game of cricket. So cricket's not just an insect. It's also a game that people play. So those two games kind of morphed together to, to form and help us get to modern day baseball. Um, Miss Beans or Bind, I can't, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, third grade. Uh, Sammy from St. Ignatius would like to know, when was the original stadium the Reds played in built? So, well, the, the current stadium, Great American Ballpark, was built in 2003. Uh, if you want to go way back in time, the 1869 Reds played at a field that doesn't exist anymore, but the 1869 Cincinnati Red Stockings, their home field was right where Union Terminal is right now. So, the museum center at Union Terminal, which is the big kind of half dome building, looks like the Hall of Justice from the Super Friends. Uh, that there was, there was a, there's a fountain there now, and where that fountain is right at the entrance, that's where the original Red Stockings field was. It seems like there should be a plaque there since it's. And there might, there might be a might marker. Be I'm not certain if there is or not. Who is the Christopher Butcher wants to know who's the newest 
person to get in the Hall of Fame? Our, our last, well, Marty Brenneman is our last, uh, the, the announcer of the Reds who, who recently retired. He is set to be inducted. He was going to be inducted this year, and then the Rona hit. So yeah. he would be, he's the next on, on tap to go into the museum, and hopefully we'll have that ceremony next year. All right. Well, I tell you what, Ken, thank you guys so much from the Cincinnati Reds. And here's hoping that, uh, you know, the 2021 season is back to some sense of normalcy here. Um, I know that you guys, um, you, you have those uh, virtual tools. If you want to tell the teachers that one more time, because I know they're looking for other field trips and things to do, and they can dive a little more in depth into the Hall of Fame there. What, are, what do they need to do one more time? Absolutely. So uh, the easiest way is to go to Reds Museum, R-E-D-S Museum, redsmuseum.org. And then once you get to the museum's page, go to school groups and you will see uh, information about our field trip offerings and the six education programs that we offer. All right. Thank you so much, Ken. And uh, when you get a chance, it's fascinating to get down to the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, we sure do appreciate you guys coming on today and uh, go Reds, right? Well, here, here. And Big Dave, real quick, thank you for, for uh, having, for being with us and thinking of us if you, in your YouTube tour day force yeah. of the area. So it was a pleasure to have you and your team here and uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Absolutely, Ken. Thank you very much, brother. Thank and uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, what did you learn? Anything new in the baseball world for you there? Ah, this, the stuff that they have that's new, that's kind of behind the scenes, is awesome looking. Yes, it's very fun. I, I, that was, sadly, I, I hate to admit this, the first time I had been to the Reds Hall of Fame Museum, I go to games all the time, but I had never been in there. I was kind of saving yeah. it for, a, a, you know, and I don't know what I was waiting for. I want to go back now. I know, Statman, you liked looking at the baseball cards and everything else like I did. Yeah, a lot of them I, I remember from growing up. And I tell you, my favorite part was taking pitches from Mr. Perfect, Tom Browning. I Absolutely. mean, the hardest part of taking a pitch from him is to remember not to look at him, to look at the ball that's coming at you. Because I'd be amazed, like, well, that's Tom Browning throwing a pitch right now. Oh, that pitch is coming at me. Whoa. Yeah, you gotta, take, you gotta take your eye off the ball. And uh, actually, right. I know you had a good time there, and uh, you enjoyed those swings a whole lot there at Great American Ballpark. Hey, I could even do it in heels, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I tell you what, guys, thank, to, thank you to everybody. And we want to make sure we thank Logan Services, Logan AC and Heating Services, and uh, Papa. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Somebody, I see some little cute girl named Sierra here. Sierra, what are you holding up there? Oh. Is that a baseball card of yours? Can you hold it up again, sweetheart? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I love that. It, who is that? Trevor Bauer? It's hard for me to see who it is. She doesn't know, but it's a nice looking card and a very adorable young lady holding it there. So thank you so much. Guys, uh, we want to thank Logan AC and Heating Services uh, for uh, sponsoring our field trips. And also, teachers, got to let you know right now, Boy, howdy, you thought this one was fun? Well, we're going to have one right there with it next week. We're going to get a sneak peek next Wednesday over at the Cincinnati Museum Center. Ken had talked about that. We're going to see the holiday trains before anybody else gets to see them in the tri-state. We're talking everything. And if we're lucky, we'll see a statue that looks just like this guy's stat. You think? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to go. It's getting close to Christmas time. So let's do that. Make sure you go over to uh, B105.com. Sign up now. Reserve your space to be on our Big Dave Show virtual field trip to the holiday trains at the Cincinnati uh, Museum Center. And I'm looking forward to seeing that because they recently renovated all that and I haven't been in since they did it. So uh, thank you guys for coming on the field trip today. Have a fantastic Wednesday. Hopefully they let you, if you're in school, go outside for some recess. So uh, everybody say bye.